and I brought them in. Oh, sorry, I forgot to record. I'm hitting oh. record now. Sorry. <laughs> Good. Talk about the name. So the diapers are. I thought they talked about needing space to store. That's what I thought. Too. Well, you, I'm going to need space. You know, she called because I'm getting two shipments. Um, because if I ask for, say, 4T diapers or size four, I don't even know what size they are anymore. You know, and I have for, for two people, I'm getting like two cases per person. Wow. Wonderful. Yeah. So, I you got to so store it. Well, I had talked to Nancy Moore at Christ of His Christ Church because that's where I go. And that's where the food pantry, the Oxford Hills food pantry is about because they have stored space. And so I, I was talking to her about that. So that's kind of interesting that the space is not quite what I thought was needed. Yeah, I'm just going to use the upstairs and in, in our church because we're not using it right at the moment. You're not using it right now. Yeah. So are you having people come in to the pantry? Are they shopping in the pantry or are they are they doing boxes, takeout boxes? They're they're shopping in mine, they're shopping in the pantry. We're limiting how many people can actually be in the pantry at once. Um, and that's we started doing that back again in June. Oh, no. well, you've been doing it for a long time. No, no, no. no. In January, January, February, what oh. month are we in? I can't remember. No, it was I, it was last fall. Yeah, it was last fall. I know the new one that's not part of TFAB in Rumford had lines this morning at it in cars. Oh, I the mean, old school food pantry, really? No, not the old school. It's the one that's down on Congress Street. It's not the TFAB one. It's the First Assembly of God or something like that. Here, I'm going to look on my calendar. I don't even know. Rumford, uh, yeah, PAG. Um, it's, uh, you think I'd have both sides of my calendar printed. They had lines because we were, I was downtown with my husband doing grocery shopping. Wow. And it was backed up and they were turning onto this back street and it, they were just loading them with boxes, you know, a box per car. But You know, that's interesting. I really didn't think the lines were as long anymore as they had well, been. I'm noticing was, I, um, at the UU church where community lunch was and is now a food distribution here in Norway, that the lines are not nearly as long as they were a year ago at this time. Well, they might not be as long. but They're still was, counting on about 70 people. About 70, yeah. Praise Assembly of God. That's the one you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And they had lines, two lines coming, you know, to them and wow. meeting meeting at their headquarters, I guess. Well, how many people come to the Andover Food Pantry monthly? Average between 30 and 40. Oh, monthly. Monthly. We weekly average 30. Weekly 30 and 40. And they can come once a week. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Every Tuesday. And Sarah, how many are you getting in the drive-through for the dinners? You're Oops, you're muted. muted. You're muted. We're still saying that. That's going to be the one thing out of COVID we've all learned to say. You're muted. I keep trying to be good and, and mute myself, and because the you know everybody talks and the cat meows, and then I forget I'm muted. So I apologize. I've got baby chicks in front of me underneath my. Oh. <laughs> I'm waiting for them to make some noise. <laughs> um, some months we've fed, uh, we've given out 120 meals a month. Um, a couple of times it's been closer to 70. Uh -huh. um, because last, I, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm curious because I know the same day that you all do your dinners, Foothills Food Works distributes yeah. food at the Oxford Hills Food Pantry. And um, the Progress Center is back to having their meals on Thursday where you can come and eat from three to four. So like between Thursday and Friday of that one week, there's a lot of, well, it's a lot of meals. It's a lot of food. Yeah. And that was one of our questions is having it on the third Friday of every month, is that the most helpful for the community or should we be doing it a different day, a different, I mean, that's, I'm not looking for an answer right this second, but is there a way that we could be 
doing this better for the community? Um, um, it's hard to know because you've been doing it on that date for a really long time. I mean, if it was me, I would try to pick one where a block away, I mean, the Progress Center is always gonna be serving on Thursday afternoons. So the meals that are happening on Fridays right now are, you know, um, Agnes Gray gets a meal um, and the, you, the, um, the Foothills Food Works is serving three Fridays at the community garden. Now it used to be the UU church um, and they're once at Oxford. So, I mean, Tuesdays is packed with pantry things. Um, Thursdays are not as crowded. Mondays, no one wants to do it on a Monday though. I know. So it's, it's kind of hard. Wednesdays, there's not a lot of, there's no meals in the Norway area on Wednesdays at all that I know of when I look at my calendar. Um, the only meal Foothills Food Works is serving is, well, they're serving in Sweden and they're serving at the old school food pantry on the first and the third, but there's on Wednesdays, there aren't any. Um, but if you want to keep, keep to Fridays, it's, you know, there, there's just a lot going on. So, yeah. And I don't know if you know, congregationalists, it takes us like five years to make a decision. So <laughs> The committee. It's a that's committee. That Everything is on committee. That's why. Exactly. That's right. That's okay. that's okay. I'm on a bunch of boards. I feel the same way. Um, mm -hmm. and and I don't know if you guys know, but I'm speaking of boards. I'm on the board of the Allen Day Community Garden, and everything we are doing these days is pay what you can. So the Pete's will have the, 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 um, the market starting again in July and August and the Friday night pizzas will be pay what you can. If you have anybody as an individual or a group who is interested in a garden pl plot to grow, it's pay what you can. You can't pay anything, you can't pay anything, but you can still have a garden plot. The CSA shares are fully subscribed for this year, but they are also pay what you can. Um, so, and they'll be having, we are the um, fiscal sponsor now for Foothills Food Works. So one of the reasons they, and they lost their spot at the Grange for serving. So that's why they're serving at the garden. So um, we really do try to encourage people to come. Um, the garden for our market accepts SNAP benefits. It, it's, it accepts harvest bucks. It sponsors bonus bucks. So it's a great place um, if you have people coming who are asking for more fresh fruits and vegetables, if they want local fruits and vegetables, they're really trying to make it affordable. I mean, there, there is an understanding that local foods at farmer's markets are often more expensive, and that's true. But they've tried to um, accommodate for that by allowing SNAP benefits. And with the harvest bucks, and this is also true at Fair Share, and there's a couple other places that if people come in and they use their SNAP benefits on fresh local produce, they get fit a, a you know a two for one. So if they spend five dollars, they actually get ten dollars worth of value to hmm. use on that. So um, and that's a statewide program. So that's a really good thing for people to know about to share. I don't know if you guys are. But if there's if there's anybody who, um, you know, since Sarah, since you're close by, any of your congregants, any groups, if you have a youth group or anybody who wants to, the bell ringers want to plot, you know, it's kind of fun to garden as a group. It spreads out the weeding with other people. <laughs> Guys, if you don't have, and then there's people I'm who just notes. like <laughs> and then there's people who go and garden to get away from all those other people that they have groups with. So that happens too. That happens too. Who's joined us? 543069. Sounds like <laughs> sounds like a, it's gotta be Ben. Hello? It's Jenny. Holly, it's Jenny. The song Jenny. But was it five six seven nine? Well, no, what was five, it? Four, three, six, <laughs> seven, nine. Yeah. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? 
I'm good. Are you new from the Camden Canton Baptist? No. Oh, awesome. Welcome. Your yeah. wife said you were coming. Yeah, well, it took me a little bit to get here. I had to switch everything from one computer to the other to do it. Oh, I'm sorry. Had to, well, my name is Holly and welcome to the forum. We have a little small select group, but that's good because if you want to ask a lot of questions, that's good. Would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Jim Martin. My wife, Helen, is the director of the Camp Food Pantry. And I'm the assistant director. <laughs> uh, I take all the phone calls for our pantry because she works full time. And I do whatever running around has to be done. Uh, that's really about it. We've taken it over because, of course, I'm sure you've heard about Steve and Lisa. Steve and Lisa will. And uh, Steve gave me a bunch of training here and there on different things. And uh, so Helen got voted in as director. And I was kind of glad it wasn't me. At first, it was looking like they, they wanted me as director. And I thought, I don't know if I can do this. Helen is so much better at all the paperwork programs she's made uh what do you call them uh spreadsheets for different things keep track of everything what we get donated what goes out people that come to us on a regular basis uh attendance sheets all that so we have a really good account on or numbers on all the people that come in we're serving right around 100 people a week right now. Wow. Roughly 40 families come in and get food. We have like one volunteer that picks up for five or six families every single week. And a few of the other volunteers pick up for a few others. Uh, we pick up from Hannaford and Walmart on Fridays and Hannaford again on Sundays. We distribute that food on Sunday. Are you connected with Good Shepherd Food Bank, Jim? Yes. You are. So you are. Month month. Yeah, I'm and wondering I'll, where Amy is today. Amy's usually on this call, so I'm kind of curious where she is today. Oh, you want me to call her? No, it's okay. <laughs> don't well, I don't know. I don't know how many churches are involved, but it's also Holy Week, which is a hard one for churches. It is. Yeah. It yeah, is so definitely, it is a hard one. I, I agree. Um, well, Jim, you are new. One of the questions I wanted to ask you is because Rosalie is looking for a director for her food pantry in Norway at Christ Church. What, and she's been having a hard time. How do you think she should go about it? Because Canton was very lucky to get you and Helen. So maybe you can give Rosalie a little insight on how to recruit somebody because it worked on whatever they did worked for you. <laughs> well, we have right now, we have about 14 volunteers overall. <clears throat> so each volunteer only has to work about one weekend a month. We try to show up most weekends to help. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Um, Helen and I have been doing it for probably a little over a year, year and a quarter, roughly. We've been helping. So we've been learning along the way from Lisa and Steve. And so after this happened with Lisa and Steve, we had a meeting. We called the meeting one evening after, you know, after supper, it was like seven o'clock, six or seven, I can't remember. Anyway, we called the meeting for all the volunteers. So we all gathered around with no expectations. It just started, Helen came up with a bunch of questions for all the volunteers, everything from how often can you work? Are you happy with the things they are, with the way things are? Uh, she had a whole list of questions and we told everybody to bring their questions to me. And then the uh, the question was raised by one of the volunteers that's been with us for a long time. She really knows her way around. 
but she didn't want to be the director. And we talked to the people, nobody else wanted to be director either. Uh, so we had a vote, and they, they voted in Helen as director. She accepted. And that's the way that went. So we had that one meeting with everybody involved, and more phone calls and had a time with people that had been doing it for a long time. So they were talking to each other beforehand. Mm -hmm. And that communication seemed to help. So everybody came to the meeting knowing what they wanted to ask and wanting to participate. Well, they're very lucky to have you guys. <laughs> yes. I can say. I'm, glad, I'm glad I did that. Um, do you have any questions for the group as a new director? Anything you'd want to know or anything we can connect you with? Are you needing any resources? So far, we're doing okay on resources. Uh, we're getting hooked up more with uh, Mainers, feeding Mainers, Peter Shepard, talking to Nancy. Um, one thing I'd like to do if I can but I don't want to intrude on anybody is come to different pantries when they're operating or when they want me there at a different time, whatever. And I'd like to just go see how they do things. Because it's always any, good to come anytime to Andover. Anna is up at the Andover Food Pantry Tuesday, and Rosalie is at the Oxford Hills Food Pantry. Anna is There's a voice delay. More than welcome. Right. And, and you know, I would imagine, you know, you, you guys are getting the calendar and on the back of it's all the numbers to reach people. I would imagine that most, I can't think of anybody who I've talked to who wouldn't be okay with you to come visit and see. Just give them a heads up so they know. Mm -hmm. And if they're busy, they can make sure that there's somebody else there you know, that can talk with you while somebody else is working. That's the big thing. I'm guessing that Helen can get me a list. Well, I know she was working on it the other day, going through the state of Maine, Maine.gov, and food pantries, and I think they each had their contact numbers. So I'm going to email Helen the calendar that I put out because it has all of the pantries in the foothills area and their numbers and their addresses on it. That'd be perfect. Okay, I'll send that out to you right after this call because I already did all the work. <laughs> you don't need to do it anymore. It's a pain. It's not all in one place. It's not even all on Good Shepherd um, and, and getting everybody's information and dates and stuff. So, oh, that'd be perfect. Thank you. yeah, I will send that off to you, Jim. Not a problem. I appreciate that. Yeah. I do think he's right that it's going to have to come from one of our volunteers at some point. Right now, the board itself has decided to take over the duties and we've split up some of the work. And yes, right now I'm the spokesperson still <laughs> looking for a director but uh yes uh, i think he's right it's got to come from the volunteers who come into work at the pantry and understand how it works and right. what we do and you know i think jim's approach and helen's approach of you know she's got skills that work for one part of the job somebody else has skills that work for a different part of a job you know when when i have found um when i've try to tackle big projects and things like that. I think that really helps. It's very hard to find somebody who has all of the qualities and time and availability to do all of something. And if you, you know, many hands make light work, right? There's, there, there's a reason why that gets said over and over again. And I just watched Ben Franklin on PBS. So I'm full of all of these things. That was really good. If you haven't seen it yet, Ken Burns did it, but um, I, I think, you know, finding, Rosalie, you're a great spokesperson. You know, you have people who are used to doing the pickup and deliveries. Somebody who maybe can't be at the pantry, who 
can't physically be there, maybe they're good on the computer and they can do the ordering or the phone or things like that. I think, and, and that way, I also think it makes the, the organization stronger. So if there is something that happens to that one person, there are other people, it's not all going to fall and crash and burn. You know, I was, I was part of a, when I lived in DC, I worked for, I was part of a tennis organization, the local USTA. And we had this fabulous guy, Bruce, who did everything. He ran every computer program. He did, I mean, he was just amazing. He did, he was, he had a problem. You went to Bruce. There was 10 of us on the board. Bruce did 99% of the work. Bruce had a brain aneurysm and died at 39 years old. Oh, we, it was horrible. We had no idea even what the passwords are. I mean, we're sitting there trying to figure out mascots to his college and sports teams, whatever, you know, what are his dog's names so that we could come up with passwords. So having a division of responsibility and having things written out and spread out, I really think makes it better for everyone. What, when we said, uh, what, when did, Wow, Lisa, I've got my brain's all gone. Lisa and Steve had a laptop dedicated for the campus. But the, uh, Steve had it set up, totally wiped out clean, and set up somewhere like Staples. But there wasn't anything on it yet. So what Helen did is she started hooking up and setting up emails and passwords, uh, like email password, the name and password, the same as Good Shepherd, things like that. And it's all saved on this one laptop. So if something happened to us, somebody could come grab this laptop and just start working with it. That's great. Is that, is that a laptop you got from Good Shepherd? Is that oh, a did you get that laptop from Good Shepherd? No, oh, Steve, actually, what they did after Lisa passed, Steve had trouble with the computer, so he had it wiped clean and set it up for the pantry. And yes. he bought himself a new computer. And so this is actually his old laptop. Because the one I work off is from Good Shepherd at no cost. They do have that capability. That's something you can get through Good Shepherd, along with no. along with, with internet service. That's good Shepherd. Good yeah, or a grant for internet service. I'm going through that process now. Hmm, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's if you don't know, a couple times a year, Good Shepherd puts out calls for grant applications from pantry partners, and they're um, they're usually, I, I mean, people I know have gotten a van, they're getting money for a driveway, people have gotten all kinds of things, shelving, refrigeration, um, lots of different things through these grants, and they're pretty easy but to write and. I would be happy to help you with that if you weren't comfortable with that or find somebody to help you. Um, but there, there's the, the, the internet and the computer is something that they offer. It's not, you don't have to go that's through not the grant for us. Right. Yeah. Right. It's just a service that they provide. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Oh, right. We're on DSL here. It's a little small. So is is Amy your chair your person from Good Pant from Good Shepherd? Okay. Amy's back. She's the one that can direct you in the right direction right. there. Right. Sarah, where do you guys get your food for the, for your meals? Um, a lot of times we have gotten them from the um, Harrison Food Pantry. Um, if they have excess, they'll um, hand some over to us. Mm -hmm. um, we accept donations. So sometimes we'll use those donations and then go out and buy food with it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes church members 
bring in the food or if they make it at home, then they, you know, they'll go to the grocery store and buy the food and then make it. Because very often the pantries have a surplus of certain items and yeah. we'd be ha I mean, we've had everything from baby back ribs to of course the ubiquitous <laughs> chickpeas that everybody has. But I mean, they've had, you know, a hundred pound bo boxes of baby back ribs delivered to Sweden and they couldn't use it because they had a small number of families and they were, you know, they're not taking that much meat. So, um, you know, if you're ever looking for a resource for something, you know, let us know. And also um, Foothills Food Works has done a great job at procuring locally and getting a network. Chris Borden um, with Foothills Food Works has really made some good connections with local farms and local providers um, to get low cost or donated food for his ready-made meals. And, um, you know, I'm all for economies of scale, you know, to, to, you know, that many hands make light work again and, you know, cook it, cook it once and eat it three times, you know. <laughs> yeah, we were able to get on the, on the rib thing. We oh, were able did? to get on, got on the yeah. rib. Yeah. Yeah. And we had, um, oh, what's that barbecue place there in Norway? At Dave's, Dave's barbecue. Yeah, yeah, he cooked them up for us, so. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, he did? He cooked them up? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's great to know. Rosalie, have, did you want to say something? Did you have I your was going to I wanted to mention that Chris is getting some food for us, from us, this Friday. He's going to pick it up. But uh, if Sarah needs something from the Oxford Hills Food Pantry, she could come and see what we have that oh, would well, work for her. And they have, they get, you guys get a ton of meat. I'm always shocked when the guy, when I was, I do, I, before COVID, I was doing my snapped cooking classes in the kitchen there and I'll start up again this summer. Um, but when they would bring this meat down, it was, you know, all this frozen meat from Hannaford, tons of it. So, um, I know it goes out the door too, but I'm just saying there, there's always seems to be, I'm always surprised how much meat is at the food pantry and people are very well supplied. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. I'm going to be starting um, in-person cooking classes again this summer at Christ Church. So I'll be putting out a flyer and if they're free to anybody to attend, um, I'm going to do a kid's one. I'm going to do an adult's one. I'm going to do a parent and caregivers, which is really good for new parents or parents of very young kids with picky eaters and they're pulling their hair out and, and, um, going crazy and trying to make them feel better that we've all been through that <laughs> and just get better. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to mention, um, for those of you who've who know where the church is located, um, the church's parts, parsonage is right next door. It's like the church, the parsonage, and then Stevens Memorial Hospital. Mm -hmm. I don't live in the parsonage. I live in Auburn. So we actually, the church voted to, we're going to use the space for programming um, for kids. So um, just so you folks know, um, if you need a space, um, it's not ADA compatible, which is unfortunate, and we're trying to figure out how to make that work. Um, but if, for example, Holly, if um, if the kitchen at Christ Church, I don't know, was taken by aliens <laughs> and you needed to back up, um, you know, please feel free to reach out or any of you, you know, if you if you need a space to meet or something like that. Oh, that's good to know. That's that's great to know. Um, can I share that? Because I work for Healthy Oxford Hills. So I, is that okay for me to share with my team members? That would be who may great. have yep. community organizations who are looking for space. That's great. Yep. And we're we're yep. now in the Ripley building. We're actually in the hospital now. Oh, great. Big brother has taken over Healthy Oxford Hills. I have a question. <laughs> yep, Jim, go ahead. I have a quick question for Sarah. Yeah. Where did you say you get your food from and what town are you with? I'm the pastor at the Second Congregational Church in Norway. Norway. And yeah, and sometimes we've gotten food from the Harrison Food Pantry. Um, sometimes we've used our donations and bought food. And sometimes, like this past time, um, uh, church members have made food at home and then brought it in. Um, the reason for that, I should have clarified our basement flooded 
Um, so we've we've had to pull up, pull out and pull up everything in our basement. So our big kitchen can't be used. So we only have our little galley kitchen um, to make food with. So Jim, if you have not met Sandy, have you talked to Sandy Sweat yet at the Harrison Food Bank, Jim? I have. Oh, I'm sorry. Have you talked with her? So you need. I, I will include her phone number with the email to you because Harrison Food Bank is another resource in addition to Good Shepherd that she can supply you. She's a huge operation. They're running right. 400 people through there every Tuesday, but she has, I want to say, four refrigerator trucks and she goes around the state going and picking up food from all different sources. And she would be happy, She's and she has repeatedly said to me, and on this call when she's come on, if you need, I can deliver. She can deliver to you if you're on their well, route. She doesn't, deliver to, she doesn't deliver to everywhere. She doesn't deliver everywhere. If, if she, you're on the route, she will deliver yeah. to you, but you can come up and pick up yeah. And she has an amazing amount of produce, cheeses, dairy. It's a huge operation. She also just got an almost $400,000 grant to upgrade her building. She got a grant from the federal government through um, a special thing through Susan Collin and Angus King to upgrade her building to make it a full community center um, for because she would have insurance people, social workers come. It's it's quite an operation. She's 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 sounds like a heck of an operation. She is, but she's she's very happy and wants to support the smaller pantry. She doesn't want you guys to feel intimidated. She's like they're always afraid to ask. It's like we have enough to share, and they consider themselves a food bank and not a pantry. So. So, Could you post her information again? Yeah, in fact, uh, yes, I can do that. And, and I okay. can actually just put it right right now in the um, chat if you want, or I can tell you what it is. Hold on. But she's super nice. Um, and like I said, that's what she's there for. So uh, Sandy Sweat, her direct number is 647-337. 3384. Thank you. 647-3384. 647-3384. I don't know why her phone number is not on my phone. Her, I have her phone number. I have her email. I'll include her email. I think it's Harrison Food Bank or something. But um, yeah, she... She's a real go-getter and she um, is also incredibly generous. So she does not want to keep this food there. She wants it to get out. Sandy, Sandy, S-W-E-T-T. -T. And she's got her husband driving all over the state, Jim. So you're not alone. It's kind of a thing that happens. My husband's fearing retirement that this is his future, probably. <laughs> oh, I'm retired now. I've been retired for two years now. So it's good to, uh, I'm glad that I can get back. And it's, uh, it's a pleasure. People thank me all the time. So it's my pleasure. I'm really glad that I can. That I can do this. I use the food bank when my children were young, mm -hmm. and um, my second wife had two kids at home. I had two kids, so we were struggling for food. And um, food, I don't remember what the food pantry name was. It was. It was a church in Auburn, and all they asked that if you could volunteer for a few hours once in a while and come get food every week. And so I did that. And uh, it wasn't a lot of work. <clears throat> Just helping people with things and moving things around a little bit. Wasn't running anything, wasn't having to make decisions or anything like that. It was just a matter of putting in a little bit of muscle, you know, a little bit of time. And so I'm, my life is blessed, I believe, and uh, we have what we need. 
and it's glad that I glad that I can give back. Right. I think that's great. You know, I I think that um, recruiting from pantry participants is actually a really important thing to do. I think if people are willing and able, I think it gives them a feeling that they're not taking just charity, but they're giving back and there's a sense of dignity and pride and a feeling that they are part of the community which I think is hugely important. So I, I, I think that's wonderful that you were able to do that. Um, when I was doing in-person classes and there, all my participants were pantry participants as well, you know, this one lady came and she was like, I, I'm good, but I'm going to do your dishes for you. You know, I want to do that. And I'm like, you don't have to do that. And, but, you know, people... It's a sense of pride and dignity, and it's very important that we remember that, especially when we're dealing with the food insecure. Nobody wants to be going to the food pantry. Nobody wants to be shopping at the food pantry. And we all should be wanting to get out of business. But until that happens, we need to respect everybody's condition, understand where they are, they're coming from, and give them the opportunity to help if they want to. I have a, we had a new client about a week or so ago that uh, she hasn't used pantry in many years and she's all apologetic. Sorry to bother you. I hate to take this. I feel bad. And I kept telling her, no, look, if you need it, that's why we're here. We'll give it to you. Give you anything you need. So, I met her at a food pantry and gave her some food to get her started. Told her when she could come on Sunday. And, you know, she just kept apologizing. Said, no, don't apologize. Things are tough right now. Gas prices and food prices and oil for your, for your home and all that stuff. We understand. And there's food here that we can give you. Yeah. I'm curious, you know, usually in the summertime, we see less pantry participants because people have more money because they're not paying for heating costs. But because of the price of gas and the price of food inflation, I couldn't believe it. I just went to the grocery store today and I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did I just spend on this? Um, I, I, I'm curious to see if we don't have that downturn and it stays more constant. We're starting to pick up right now more people um, coming in right. we're picking up of course we're allowing people to come in weekly now instead of monthly even though we have to record it monthly uh, so but i i don't know if i should mention this or not but there is a downer about the locations especially harrison who put the food in the trunk people People are getting things they don't want and they're turning it into the Oxford Hills Food Pantry. Oh, I see the spaghetti in carts outside of Hannaford. I'm like, I know where that whole wheat pasta came from. <laughs> and oh, and Daddy-O says their pantry is filled with items from other pantries. Right, I think, I think if we can get back to allowing people to choose what they want, we will have much less food waste and much less of the oh, zucchini being passed around the neighborhood because there's an overflow of zucchini because it's the whole wheat pasta gets to, and by the way, just cook the whole wheat pasta like four minutes longer and it takes that cardboard chew out of it and it's much more palatable. You won't know the difference. Just cook it a little longer than the box. <laughs> we noticed the change now that they're being able to shop on their own. You know, we don't have that waste because, but I'm sure we did. But we always said, give it to somebody else that wants it. Right. But it's it. a burden. I mean, they have to move it. They have to store it. They have to give yeah. it to somebody else. You know, I, I, and I think it's a pain. So I think if you can keep up that shopping, there's a lot more dignity in oh. that. And there's a whole lot less food waste. So I yeah. think that's important. We were, because of COVID, we were, uh, we stopped people from coming inside and we were filling bags. Our volunteers were 
fill bags for the approximate number of everything. And then when people showed up, we carried outside. But part of the client's uh, desires or needs is to socialize. And they miss that. And they were, again, like we were just saying, we, you know, a lot of people got a lot of food they didn't really want. Yeah. So we switched it to letting people in just one or two at a time. So when one person was at the far side of the room, we'd let somebody else in. Right. But we'd have cars out in line. Sometimes we'd have 20, 30 cars out there waiting. The people were waiting a long time. Yeah. So Helen set up a spreadsheet, split everybody up into eight groups. So between eight and uh, between nine and 11 on Sunday, there are eight 15 minute time spots. Wow. So she printed out the spreadsheet, and every week somebody they get a schedule. So every week, if you come in at nine o'clock this week, you'll come in at nine fifteen the next week. You come in at nine thirty the following week, and so on. So now there's only one or two cars waiting in line wow. because people have a little schedule, a little strip of paper with their schedule on it. We just cut them, print them, and cut them out hand them out so they know when to show up we, and they get we first open. choice get middle yeah. and last choice sometimes we open at nine o'clock and people are there hey yeah that's sometimes that's people are lined up people are lined up for the community lunch an hour before the clients are loving it. they're glad that they're not out there waiting for a half hour an hour sometimes there, and they still get to come in and take what they want. Mm -hmm. um, so they've been very happy with the schedule. We keep a few extra pieces of paper in, in, a, in, a, in a folder so that if they show up and they say, I forgot my schedule or I lost my schedule, we'll always give them another one. And so there's eight groups and eight 15 minute practice of time. Right. And they know when to show up. They're not waiting and waiting a long time, and they're very happy with it. That sounds and it's good. not always some people showing up early. We've had some people show up an hour early trying to get in. Well, they're waiting. Can't take we have that early also, and we let them in, and they'll sit around and socialize. We have an upstairs and a downstairs, and they come early to socialize with each other instead of, you know, waiting out in the cars because we let them in now but they'll sit and socialize for an hour because i yeah. say you don't have to come at nine you don't have to be there at nine there's a group at oxford hills that comes on mondays and fridays for the produce that doesn't even go inside and they hang out outside and i've recruited for my class yeah. and a lot of the people were in my class and i kind of miss them i kind of showed up just to say hi because I wanted to see how they were doing. And I knew they would be there on Mondays and Fridays at nine o'clock, whenever that produce arrived. It's amazing. But you know, the social aspect is very nourishing and very important. I mean, I had a woman, when I first started doing this five years ago in my first snap ed class, and I actually started a class in January, crazy, but I had six people show up. And I asked everybody why they were coming. And this one woman said, I needed to get out of the house. That was why she came. And I said, you know, we all need to get out of the house. That is a great answer, you know. Um, and in the end, she learned to cook with much more than salt and pepper. So that was great. But she got out of the house and she recognized that. So, you know, knowing that you are nourishing more than stomachs is very, very important when people come to see you. You, you may be the only people they're seeing that day or that week and talking to. You know, it's really important. So um, I have to I, I have to bow out because I got a phone call and I've got a diaper delivery to go get in the church. Okay. Well, thank you for coming, Anna. So well, I, I think we're all going to bow out here. I'm going to send Jim an email um, and I will make sure everybody gets Sandy sweats. 
um, email and you all have her cell phone. Sarah, call me if you need anything. Um, and I, I'll also try to connect you and Rosalie on email since you guys are neighbors. Yeah. Yes, please do. Please I will do. do that. All righty. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Good job. Good job, Jim. Thank you.